Our Art Chatter mission statement is that our primary mission is an intellectual analysis of art and the process of making art to inform and inspire all of our artists. What does Art Chatter do? Art Chatter is a Houston collective of established mid-career visual artists who define the stereotype of an artist working in an isolated studio practice. The collective offers its members a forum for the exchange of creative ideas, information, and critical responses. Members produce individual artwork in a variety of media, including painting, drawing, sculpture, printmaking, assemblage, and fabric arts, while using contemporary art strategies, including historical references to abstraction, expressionism, pop art, realism, surrealism, etc. Many individual studios are near Washington Avenue's Cultural Arts District, located north of downtown Houston. What is the history of Art Chatter? The Art Chatter Critique Group was founded in 2004 by Tammy Merrick and Lynn Rutsky with the primary inspiration of the Cobra School, an artist collective formed in 1948 in the Café of Notre Dame, Paris. Art Chatter is now celebrating over 10 years of art criticism. Most members of the group have studied at the Glassell School of Art, um, MFHA, and membership is by invitation only to a limited, it's a limited size and has an individual critique format for about 20 members. In addition to the ongoing self-examination, the artists have individual studio practices. Annually, we vote on a guest critic and some of our illustrious um, guest critics have been um, from the Houston community and they include Joseph Havel, artist sculptor, Glassell School art director, Allison DeLima Green, contemporary curator for the Museum of Fine Arts, Anya Tisch, Anya Tisch Gallery, Sally Sprout, Williams Tower, Toby Camps of the Manel Collection, Sarah Kellner, Houston Art Alliance, Michelle White from the Manel Collection, artist Howard Sherman, John Adelman, and Terry Sultan, director of the Parish Art Museum, along with Clint Wilhauer, who was the Galveston Arts Center um, director. We occasionally have group exhibitions, lending insight into how individual artist practice may influence the collective. Public group in exhibitions are intended to communicate Art Chatter's mission for critical analysis rather than highlight the art specific artists and their work. My art career has uh, stemmed from the 70s when I was in college to a little earlier than that, really, when I was a kid. But um, I kind of found my way into uh, the printmaking medium. And um, I had been a painter before, and I didn't find myself to be that good of a painter. And so I tried screen printmaking and woodcuts now. Uh, as an artist, what are your mediums? My mediums are uh, uh, screen printing on paper and woodcuts and getting the grain of the wood into the print. Um, like this big print behind me is uh, carved on MDF and then uh, this is just a test print before I actually had it uh, printed at, uh, uh, by a master printer. Describe your thoughts about the art chapter. Oh, the Art Chatter group's a great group. I've been a, uh, associated with them for about maybe eight years, eight to 10, with the dualities in life, uh, whether it be uh, process, uh, the duality of, of screen printing, where it looks like it's a positive stroke and on the paper where actually it goes through a stencil and it's a negative stroke printed to look like a positive uh, to where I'm doing these big wood cuts or the small ones. I'm working with uh, motion on a static matrix and printing that to, so it's like the static, the motion, the, the still, the, uh, the movement. Um, and they seem to be like abstract symbols for me. 
My name's Barbara Tennant. I am originally from Switzerland. I lived in many places, so I've lived in Switzerland, Canada, the East Coast of the United States, and moved to Houston in 1982. Many of my paintings have collage elements. I like to collage aerial photographs of subdivisions and maps. This is part of my architecture background. And I use these maps um, as a background for landscape paintings very often. One of the um, motivations, perhaps, for that is to blend the developed land with nature, and I do this in a very abstract way. My primary focus is to enjoy art. Art is not about words. Art is somehow comes out of a feeling. Um, I, I find that when I'm working in the studio, I have images that come to me, and perhaps I've distilled those images into landscapes and maps and how they interact together in my mind. Nobody. I've never seen anybody who does this kind of thing with the aerial landscapes and other landscapes merging. So it's something that just comes out of me and I don't know that I don't have a great philosophy except perhaps I, I do give these paintings a title or, or a, I, I consider them encroachments and a series of encroachments which shows how developed land encroaches on the natural land, and I, tr as an architect, I'm trying to make that a harmonious uh, interaction on my canvases. The way I started this painting was to do the landscape, foot the footprints of uh, buildings. I think you can see those; they're in the in the far background. And then I painted over that, and now I'm putting more footprints on top. So it's it's kind of a layered process. And perhaps that's my response to, um, or my um, apology perhaps, to my collaborator in, in the sense that I'm not heavy handing the uh, maps on top of the painting, which is kind of what I did in the collaboration. So the, the footprints of buildings, which again, this is an encroachment. This is a scene in West Texas in the early morning of winter, driving down the road, heading to the mountain pass with a ground fog in the distance. And in the sky, there's development lurking because who knows when this area will see all kinds of building encroaching in this pristine environment. My name is Becky Soria. I was born in South America. My background in art is I study in studios in South America. That was my first experience. And then when I came to the United States, I continued studying at the Glassell School of Art in Houston. In the last 10 years, possibly, I've been focusing more and uh, kind of investigating, because I'm very interested in these issues, the abstract figuration of uh, human beings and also animals, and seeing their emotions and their interiority. And uh, I've been running with that, and I have been having a great experience because I'm very interested in archetypes and symbolism. So I put a lot of symbolism in my work with lots of structures and uh, lots of colors and lots of forms. The collaborative uh, with the uh, Danish was very interesting and it was very challenging. And I would say mostly because of the distance across the oceans. But we were able to get together through the new technology, obviously the internet, etc. My collaborator, Marianne. Hello, Marianne, how are you? <laughs> uh, she is very different than me and she does totally different things. So we both had to accommodate uh, the way that we did things, but we were able to, the first collaboration, she did something water because they live in a water area with the ocean. It's very close, so she does a lot of boats and uh, I combine it with sails in very pretty colors and the result was very airy work. 
Uh, I started with something that it was mostly my idea with the little twists, and then she combined it with doing something similar to mine. So it was a very good experience. My name is Brenda Bunton Schlosser. Um, I am from a small farming town in Indiana. Once I started in art school, I was in uh, the Art Institute in Kansas City, where I just kind of fell into my family traditions of a bunch of seamstresses and curtain factory workers, quilters, and I just migrated into the fiber department and have been working with that medium and surface design on fabric ever since. I work with dyes, putting images onto fabrics, painting them, drawing on them, and then I usually cut them all up and assemble them into either sculpted pieces or mosaic panels with the fabric that I've painted. In my work, I normally work with images of the world around us. Uh, sometimes taking little itty bitty things, little details, and blowing them up real big and just examining that little detail. I tend to put the figure in a lot of my work a lot of times because it, of our relationship with the world around us and we're just all connected. Here in Texas, we have out in the hill country every spring, the blue bonnets explode and everybody runs out to go see the blue bonnets and you put your kids in front of the blue bonnets and take their pictures. And so one time when I was out there, you know, doing the blue bonnet thing, I was just the, how they were like all little people out there dancing in the wind. And so I just took little details of these little flowers and then blew them up real big and made them into figures and made them dancing like the blue bonnets dance in the fields. My name is Carol McKee. Um, I was born in the north of England in Yorkshire. So I do abstraction. I also paint animals because I began my painting career in Alaska. I painted bears and moose and everything that was around me. I'm kind of down to horses and cardinals right now, but <laughs> um, you paint, paint what's around you. And I paint trees. I love trees. I love nature. Uh, often in my abstracts, I use natural colours, although perhaps my example today is that that's not the case, but that's often my colours. Um, yeah, I, I just paint for pleasure, I enjoy it, it's just an expression of myself. The Danish collaboration um, has just been really good fun, I've really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's taken me new places made me discover new artists, uh, new styles, and it's made me think a lot. I've, it's just been a, a road of discovery. The second painting that came over was a really nice surprise. Alf originally asked me, is it okay if I put another famous artist on, on, um, on the painting and I knock yourself out? So then he asked me, well, who would you like on it? And so I said, I would like Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. I've been in love with him since I was 11. And then he said, who would you like as a famous artist? And so I chose an artist that comes from my home county in Yorkshire, David Hockney. Everything Alf is sending me is stencils. And I'd also noticed there was a lot of stencils coming from Denmark, not just necessarily to me. So I was like, what's the deal with stencils? And the stencil thing took me back to Banksy. I'd never heard of Banksy, I'm ashamed to say. He was, um, he is a famous world artist. Um, the guy in my painting with the paper bag on, he, he, he represents Banksy because Banksy, nobody knows who he is. Nobody's a clue. What he does is illegal, painting on walls. And uh, so when he was asked by Time magazine to send a picture in of himself, he sent a picture of himself with a paper bag over his head, hence the guy in the painting with the paper bag. So he keeps his anonymity. Um, but he's now world famous. And he went to Palestine and Israel. At the, of course, there's a wall there. And on that wall, he'd painted a watchtower. And watchtowers are universal. Everybody recognizes what a watchtower is. They, you can just, there it is but he transformed it into a carousel with children swinging around it. 
and I was just grabbed by that image. Also, the other one that's on my painting, which is also a Banksy's image, is the dove. And I thought it was so ironic that here's a dove and it has to wear a flak jacket and it's got um, a sight on it, you know, to be shot. And, and that just resonates, you know. I mean, we seem to be in a state of war all over the place. And I w I'm astounded by how well he, he, he says what he wants to say. He's almost like a comedian with a one-liner. Only his place is, 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 his stage is the wall. My name is Donna E. Perkins, um, and I've never lived outside the state of Texas, although I've lived all over the state of Texas. I have a master's in art from the University of Houston at Clear Lake, and I taught art for 20 years. As an artist, my mediums are paper, uh, everything from crushed paper that uh, I've um, done in conjunction with some dancers, um, and then they've become sculpture, they sometimes were wearable sculpture, and I also um, do drawings of dancers dancing, and then end up, uh, do that with graphite, and then end up with uh, acrylic on top of that, very minimal, um, very abstract. Um, then I, I also do abstract uh, paintings in acrylic and in oil, and I've been playing with a lot of what I call my sweet nothings that are acrylic, and I've just ventured into glitter, and so I've been using um, metallic paints and uh, glitter, all acrylic. My focus in my work is pretty diffuse. <laughs> I'm afraid that I go off in all sorts of directions. Um, I often want to play. I want to experiment. I rarely uh, start out knowing what I'm going to do. Uh, my work is very uh, experimental and having worked with uh, especially one particular dancer, uh, John Strong, who I've been working with uh, since 2009, he's very experimental and that has influenced the way I approach my work too. My name is Jan Jabaley. Um, I was born in Wales on a sheep farm. I was raised in, um, there for 18 years. My main intention for creating art um, has always been about engaging the viewer. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, when someone looks at my work, that it works not just far away, but also close up. So that's why I focus on the buildup of texture. I've, I've always been interested in texture, right from the first time I saw a, you know, a Van Gogh in real life, I just thought that was great. So what I try and do in both my 2D and 3D work is to um, create texture through repetition, lots of multiples, you know, uh, using ordinary, ordinary objects and things and creating something kind of interesting out of that. My overall experience with the Danish collaboration Rohrpost um, project has been great. It's, uh, first of all, I can say it's been very challenging. Um, the, the, the part that I found hardest of all was to change somebody else's uh, an artist's work. Um, to me, that was a really tough thing to do because, you know, you just don't do that normally. Um, so once I overcame, you know, the fact that I could change it and manipulate um, my um, Danish counterpart's work, then, then the rest was fun um, and also satisfying at the end, of the, the end result was. But um, it wasn't an easy process. My Danish partner in this project, she concentrates on the Danish wildlife. 
scenes, so which is very uh, different from my style. So this I wanted to create was, you know, my technique of um, creating texture with my rolled up paint of complete randomness into um, a tube of paint and then at the end was, you know, there'd be a formation of an actual goose, which is something that my um, partner Jitty um, has a lot of in her paintings. Um, I'm Jennifer Madeley Dunn and I grew up in Conroe, Texas. My undergraduate was at Randolph-Macon Women's College and had a major in art, studio art, and then I received my MFA from American University and studied at Vermont Studio School in Chautauqua Art Institute and um, studied in Italy. So I've basically been painting and drawing my entire, you know, entire life, it feels. I mean, ever since I was little, knew this is what I was gonna do. And my work has always been very, very, very abstract. So you ne didn't necessarily know that it was about the figure. And it became more about autop like looking at the inside of the body. The images that I have are from medical books, looking at autopsies, looking at growing up in Texas, I used to hunt and we'd, you know, gut the deer and we'd dissected rattlesnakes. And I find the internal part of the body beautiful. I don't find it scary. And I feel like our bodies are, carry so much about our own personal scars, our life, our history, and who we are. And a lot of it is the beautiful makings of the inside. You look at it and it's completely abstract. It relates very much to the landscape, in a sense. And growing up on the land, um, being around, you know, life and death and bones and, you know, and all of that, it was, it was very fascinating. So that's where all of my work comes from. This is called uh, Deep Layers 2, and it is actually a painting of the base of the neck all the way through the head, through the skull, looking at the brain and kind of how it morphs together. And the colors, I try to use very vibrant, loud colors. And it's a, a lot of it was probably about my iPad quite a few surgeries, back surgeries, neck surgeries. Probably about my experience going through that and how that feels and what that means to get, you know, lose a whole bodies of blood and get more, you know, do all the transfusions and how that affects you. My name is Joe Aker and I'm an artist who works in photography. Uh, the picture you see now is what I think I look like with In the Nude in a nude portrait deal uh, that I did several years ago. And what it is, is to show uh, how I feel about different things and about how I feel about my body. My overall experience with the uh, Danish collaborative work and with the response work has been very interesting. Mainly what it has been, it has been a lot of fear. Fear that I couldn't do what I really wanted to do and that I wouldn't match up to what the other people were doing. So what I, what I had to do was, it not being a painter, I first of all had to send a piece that they could paint on, which meant that I had to photograph, take one of my photographs and send over there on a piece of paper. But then I got the paper back from the Danish person and it took me weeks to even look at it so that I could start to do anything with it. And I finally decided that it needed to be a collage. This is my res the starting of my response piece. And it started out very simply as a couple of boxes that were opening with something coming out of them. And then what I started to do is I put this, the figure that's in the center between the arms that are put together as sort of a foil to the, to the arms. And if you'll notice that there is a cross that is coming down onto the arms. And what happened was is the arms even formed a little bit of a devil uh, that you have right there in the middle. And this was just something that occurred when you start to bookend two pieces together. And then I wanted to soften it up, so I put in some flowers. I haven't really titled the piece, but what I wanted was a piece that was very surrealistic, uh, in the manner of Salvador Dali or one of the other great uh, sur uh, surrealists. And that was because when I got my response piece back from the Danish artist, it was very surrealistic. And so I wanted to kind of continue that and kind of build on that. Uh, I wanted it in black and white. I wanted it to look like a pencil drawing. 
and I made everything in a very light tone except for the hands, which, you know, is something that an artist is very important to an artist. And I wanted them to stand out. But I wanted a little bit of light, like it's picking up from the rest of the world, a softness. Then it goes into the, cro the devil, and then it goes to the cross, and then goes to the person holding it. And then it goes up to, again, the boxes, and sort of, you know, which are in, in some sense like a womb. And you see the feet, be my feet beginning to come out and then back into the flowers. And it's sort of like the cycle of life, that it, you know, it starts out very soft, comes very hard, you get old, you have a lot of things in between, and then suddenly it all starts to come back into a box, and then you really get into the main box, which is the casket. And then the casket goes up, and it's dust unto dust, and then you are reborn. My name is John Bernard. Uh, I'm originally from Switzerland, Geneva, the French part. Uh, but I've been living here in Texas for over 30 years. They call me a Swiss Texan, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, I've been very, very fortunate to, uh, for the past 30 years, uh, as a photographer, as a fine artist, I've been able to make a living uh, in this wonderful state, the wonderful city of Houston. I guess when I create, you know, a lot of artists uh, start with what they call a point of departure. Uh, for me, uh, I, I do not. I, so, I sort of intuitively get into it, and uh, whether it's in a studio, uh, working with a model, uh, photographing her in, into the nude, or a portrait uh, that I overlaid element of the earth, which is mostly uh, my medium, my work. I always, I am looking for a a transformation, it's, it's a, it, a transformation, a sort of metamorphosis within the body and within the element of the earth. It's almost a, uh, creating with the duality of two images a new one. Uh, it's twisting this reality of the, the image or the statement that I'm doing into something that is really surreal. As a matter of fact, I have been compared with the surrealist movement and, and, and also with a lot of uh, the metamorphosis of Ovid uh, in the Greek mythology. This is uh, the first collaboration I received uh, from um, my artist counterpart, Gitte, from Denmark. She did this beautiful watercolor, and what I did, I merged a watercolor I created mixed with some photograph of this beautiful woman that's actually melting into this uh, landscape uh, that she created. That was an exercise that really, really, uh, I loved it because it propels me into uh, my past. Uh, when I was much, much younger, I used to do a lot of watercolor. And uh, this revived this excitement. And uh, uh, because of it, I'm going to work and explore this medium uh, again and again. My name is Kamila Szczęsna. I was born in Wrocław, Poland. I attended and, uh, and graduated from Academy of Fine Arts, also in Wrocław, Poland. And shortly after I graduated, my husband and I relocated to Galveston, Texas, where we work and live since. In my work, I'm interested in what it means to be human and how it feels to be human. My recent body of work um, relates to the very, the very moment of, of the moment that precedes understanding, of moment before the knowledge sets, of the moment of confusion, very often awe, uh, of all of that what's felt but very difficult to describe with words. And the body, the, uh, the form of my work, I'm talking about my sculptural pieces, I relate to human body. I built my sculptures out of um, pantyhose filled with balloons and covered with resin. So I uh, somehow I, I freeze the moment. I create something that is very ephemeral and then I try to capture the moment, freeze it. Um, but then I hope that the form itself, even though it relates to human body, uh, that would evoke that moment of uh, confusion and surprise in, in the viewer. 
The sculpture in the background uh, uh, belongs to the newest series that it's titled Tees. And, um, and, and, and it, it sprang from that idea, from the idea of the picturing, uh, um, the confusion uh, of, of, of us exploring the world. And also, I mean, the uh, materiality of our being as well, of the materiality of the body. My name is Karine Barker. I am French-American and I moved from Paris nine years ago. I have an academic art background and also a business background. I am a visual artist and also a curator, a community developer, um, an educator. I work mostly with uh, acrylic, some oil, ink, collage, and, um, and all kinds of materials so, um, because I like um, uh, different mediums and I work mostly on canvas, paper, and, um, and wood. My primary focus and intention in creating my artwork is to really free colors of movement to become the vitality of life. Um, but it has been a real evolution for me um, through the years because today I really also want to um, expose art to populations that are not exposed to art, like children in underserved neighborhoods, veterans, uh, and, uh, and I work with them to create programs, uh, creative programs that invite them to use art to improve the quality of life in their community, to communicate about uh, challenges that they have and they would like to improve, and really overall to show them that art is an amazing tool, an amazing language that that uh, expand, you know, our, the way we see the world, expand also our possibilities, and um, and create better places, and overall um, help us to build a better future. I could say many things about Art Shatter, but I um, the first thing I would like to say is that it's a great place to give and to receive, to exchange about art and our challenges, and also to develop great friendships with amazing artists and amazing human beings. My name is Kay Kemp, and um, I was born in Colorado, Estes Park, but when I was a baby, my parents brought me to Houston. I am a painter. I paint with uh, acrylic mostly, some gouache and dyes. I also love mixed media collage. So um, the papers are exciting to, to uh, put together in unusual ways, whereas the painting is a little bit more um, structured for me and um, meditative. The intention of my work is primarily to inspire and to invite the viewer to be inquisitive. Um, layered into all, most all of my work is an archetypal image or symbol, and so I want the viewer to see something and then upon closer examination, see what's beneath the layers and what that meaning is for them. Also, I would like for my work to evoke a spiritual response in, in its viewers. This piece is called Transcendence and it is um, symbolizes emerging from the dark night of the soul, somewhat like the phoenix rising from the ashes. As I love to do, there is so much symbolism in here. This is the fire, and of course a butterfly symbolizes the metamorphosis, the change, the change that happens when we go through a period of time where it's very dark, we don't know the answers, um, we are stuck, perhaps, and but yet we emerge fuller, um, more wise, and more beautiful, I think. My name is Kay Sarver. Um, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, lived there until I went to college, University of Cincinnati, uh, to, uh, as a painting major. Uh, fell in love with painting. Um, 
came to Houston in 1978, and I've been working here ever since as an artist. Yeah, my, my intention as an artist is to bring uh, forward um, humans, animals, plants, and, and communicate how that, that vital connection is such a part of, of who we are you know, to these other living things, uh, to the planet, so, yeah. Um, my experience with the Danish Collaborative was uh, funny. At first, I was excited when we first started talking about it, and after, uh, I had, there was some resistance to it. I was like, never have worked on one piece with the same artist. It's usually in a collaboration I've, we've shared a theme or an idea, we bounced off each other, but never this. So. This was quite a stretch, uh, and I have to say, I'm really glad. It, it forced me, you know, I had to have a willingness to grow, and it forced me to see some things differently and, uh, you know, learn to be extremely flexible, and uh, the outcome is, is really proving to be quite, quite worth it. So I'm really glad that we did it, but uh, yeah. yeah. This is just one of the wire pieces uh, on a series that I'm beginning that's, you know, just honoring animals, uh, seeing them as sentient beings. So this is a wolf, and um, the platform is really kind of like an altar, and that's why I sort of chose to use um, the gold leaf, sort of replicate something. Um, almost cherished. And then I like the rustic feel of, of maybe the wooded area around him. So I used um, oak branches and then the wire uh, and copper leaves uh, to, yeah, honor the wolf. My name is Nicola Parente. I'm originally from Italy, uh, but I've spent most of my life in the United States. I am a painter, but I also do abstract art uh, that encompasses photography, installation-based work, um, and poetry writing. The primary focus of my work is to bring in all my experiences, um, mostly of growing up in Italy. Uh, a lot of my work stems from the movement of being near trains. Um, as, a little, as a young boy, my first experience uh, taking public transportation was a, was a train, and I vividly remember looking out the window and seeing the cadence and the movement, almost as if I was watching a film. And a lot of that movement and um, a lot of that scenery uh, is incorporated into my work. So using trains as part of my inspiration, you know, I create bodies of work such as this one where it has that movement and it has that body of water and it has that uh, landscape that's moving as you're envisioning the, um, the artwork. And what I ask, what I like to do uh, through my artwork is I want to be sure that I engage the viewer and I tell a story. And through that storytelling, um, I really want to invite the, the individual to, to, to journey through the artwork and, and have their own experience. This specific body of work is from um, a series called Pelagico, uh, which is all about water. Um, and it's a Greek word meaning uh, one with water and how the importance of water is not only to mankind, but to our bodies um, and to uh, the individual. What's interesting about uh, collaborating not only internationally, but with another artist, is that it really breaks down your barriers as an artist. We're used to working in a studio, we're used to creating our work by our, on our own. So anytime you bring a mix of another artist into the mix where they are basically um, taking over your art piece and putting their mark makings and their, their paint over what you've created, um, it's, um, it's a little nerve-wracking because the fact that you know, you're used to your own work and all of a sudden it breaks down the barriers between the artists and so you create a new body of work based on that collaboration. My name's Raymond Saucillo. I'm from Houston, Texas, born and raised, actually third generation, few of us around. So in my artwork, well, for my woodwork, I take big pieces of wood, I cut them into smaller pieces, and then I glue them back together. <laughs> Sometimes I paint them, but not always. Uh, and really what I like to do, uh, and it's my, perhaps my architectural training, is I love simplicity. 
Uh, and it's really hard to do. It's actually a lot of work to break something down to its basic form and shape and have the structure exposed, something which speaks a lot to me. I use machine tools for their precision uh, and speed, but then I always reach for the hand tool to shape and sculpt a piece and give it its final touch, give it a human touch that no machine can do. This is a spoke shape, and when you're working in the round, this allows you to give you uh, both curves, convex, and concave. Uh, this is actually was designed by one of my favorite American woodworkers, Brian Boggs. And he, I was actually lucky enough to meet him and he signed it. His signature has since been rubbed off. But um, uh, again, this is a tool that's been used for thousands of years and there's just no substitute. No machine can do what this thing does. The collaboration has been great because um, it allows me to expand and push myself in ways that I would not have otherwise. So in that, in that instance, it's been a great success. And so I hope to do more of these. I am Renata Lucia. I'm a native Texan, uh, a graduate of Rice University and the Glassell School of Art. Um, in my family, I have multiple outsider artists, uh, multiple quilters, a writer, a research scientist, and I think all of that manifests in my art practice. And I also have um, multiple firefighters, which I think explains my fascination with encaustic painting. Well, I was one of the uh, multiple organizers, actually, of the collaboration process. And uh, one of my big inspirations came from one of the other organizers who said um, basically what I was trying to communicate was very similar to a Danish concept pronounced something like Hygge, right? Which uh, according to NPR means something like safe, candlelight, warm space, friends, food, you know, this fantastic feeling of, of coziness and conviviality you get. Um, and I thought that that was very similar uh, in a lot of ways, snow days removed, but like with rain days, which I was trying to communicate, similar to our experiences in Houston. And then it was also had an equivalency in my experiences in art chatter of how we come together, what it feels like to come together in this safe, cozy, great place with friends and wine and art. It's fantastic. And uh, I was also reminded how as artists that it's you know, it can be a lonely, a lonely road. You know, you have to step out of your comfort zone to succeed a lot of times, and it just makes things like art chatter and this process where you're coming together sweeter. So the cowboy pieces actually, um, the encaustic painting represents family photos. I, rep I extended a series that I had going of encaustic quilts based around a, um, a found photo album all around one woman's life. And then uh, I extend this series actually to use my own family and my partner's family photos in that, of which there are actual cowboys in our family. And then uh, the print, the screen printed pieces, the triptych actually starts to merge all of those together. My name is Tammy Merrick. Um, I originally grew up in the Midwest and I've been in Texas for about uh, 30 years. I've spent most of my time in Houston, Texas, and a short period of time in San Antonio. I have a master's degree in architecture, and I've also studied extensively at the Glassell School, and I'm finishing up a certificate of completion. And I live in the Washington Avenue Cultural Arts District. I've had various series of artwork. Uh, in the beginning, I was working a lot with uh, Ab Abex Expressionism in the early days when I studied with Robert Weimerskirch, and a lot of that was um, probably 10 years, and he was someone who taught in the basement of the Museum of Fine Arts and then later at the Glassell. And then I kind of moved into uh, abstract work and a lot of geometric work. And in recent times, I've uh, moved from that into doing some really intricate um, pattern paintings. And again, now the pattern paintings are sort of the latest painting series, but um, I'm also beginning to work in assemblage and sculpture. 
So uh, an artist in Denmark actually who had lived here reached out to us about doing a collaboration and I was a little skeptical but I had two artists, um, Donna Perkins and Renata Lucia. Both of them were very enthusiastic so they spent a month Skyping to figure out the process. Then they brought it to the group and we voted on it and I think it's been a really wonderful experience. And now we have exhibitions lined up at City Hall in Eschberg and City Hall in Houston and the Art Car Museum and the University in Eschberg. Probably uh, one of my favorite pieces would be uh, the diptych, which was actually um, kind of two frozen moments from um, a trip to Marfa we took with another couple that uh, felt a little bit like being in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, there was a rattlesnake crossing the road and there were Mormons on the train and at some point uh, the whole vacation felt surreal and so when I wanted to capture it I sort of cartooned all of us in a couple locations and combined these sort of crazy patterns um, just sort of showing the liveliness or the quirkiness of the moments that we experienced when we were there. My name is Tracy Meyer. I grew up mainly in Australia and lived in Houston for many, many years, but at the moment I am living in the UK. I started watercolour um, some years ago, about 20 years ago, and that brought me into learning more about art. I went to Glassell and graduated from Glassell in 2012. My subjects were painting and sculpture. Uh, when I paint, I paint shapes mainly. I look at repetition. Tip, re repetition is something that I am very interested in and so often there are multiples of things that I repeat over and over, which I think goes back to my craft background because in craft one is always adding one stitch on top of another stitch or you know um, that sort of thing. So I think that that is something that I, I, makes me feel uh, very good to be doing that building, one building block on, on another building block. Being part of the Danish uh, collaboration experience has been wonderful. Um, very, very, very challenging for me, uh, very different for me too, to start a piece of work that somebody else was going to finish. It took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do and to contemplate making something that was not finished, that was open-ended enough to let somebody else put their mark on was a challenge. For the response piece, I am making a triptych. So there are three boards. The piece I am showing here is the centre board and it isn't finished. My piece is talking somewhat about globalisation in the world. I have moved uh, and lived in 15 countries. I have moved much more than that. And I am fascinated by uh, the fact that uh, today, even though we are seen as a global world, that globalisation is a catch uh, cry of, of, of us, um, that we in many ways are not very successful. Globalisation is very good for commerce. We have managed to do trade all over the world and that's not a problem, but it seems that we don't manage to live together very well. My name is Trudy Askew. I was born and raised in San Diego, California, and I've always wanted to be an artist. I remember at the age of three, the first time I picked up a pencil, I knew that was it. So my whole life I've pursued art. My general approach to my art, the thing that's a theme that runs through it, is psychology of an individual and disguise and deception. Um, uh, most recently I've worked with circus themes because I love the pageantry of costume. Many times I place children in the role of the circus uh, player with animals and not 
circus animals, but animals they might have as pets. Um, and so there are two levels to the paintings. I knew when I started the circus theme that in time I would drop the costumes and drop the cir uh, circus aspects, which is what I'm doing now. The collaboration with the Danish group has been very good for me. Um, it brought me back to art because I've been in a divorce and uh, because of that I quit painting, but I had to paint for this project. So um, in that respect, it was really good. I had the perfect partner uh, and I'm sorry he didn't get another member because I was rather incommunicado and he would have been perfect for someone who wanted to share more. Uh, but we had a good experience. This painting is called Turtle Trainer. Um, it's a painting where I've dropped the circus aspect. You don't see tents. There's no costume. Uh, and you see a boy who's trained his turtles to balance. Uh, I like to have irony in my pictures and absurdity. I just um, am really thankful for all the artists that participated in the film. Um, I think that it is so great that all these artists have really made all the deadlines and worked together to do such a great job with the collaborative with Denmark and I think it's been a valuable experience for all 42 artists in this collaboration. I also would like uh, to thank uh, the Honorable Consul uh, General of Denmark, uh, Anna Thompson, for her uh, great uh, support uh, throughout this process and um, looking forward to see the exhibition, uh, whether in Denmark or here in Houston.